The following is a fan made review. Horo Masuko is the property of AIC Classics, Fuji TV, and Takako Shimura. Please support the official release. You know what I think of transsexuals? I think transsexuals are. <laughs> What up y'all, it's the Black Critic Guy, and today I'm here to review the anime Horo Mosuko, or in the English translation, The Wandering Sun, or Wandering Sun, I mean. And this actually was a very touching anime, and it really highlights the difficulties transsexuals go through, and really illustrates it very well. So the basic premise of Horo Masuko is it follows these two middle school kids, uh, Suichi Nitori, who is a boy who likes to dress up as a girl and often fantasizes about becoming a girl, and Yoshino Takasuki, a girl who likes to dress up as a boy and often fantasizes about becoming a boy. The two must now deal with their sexual identities as they make their transition into middle school and start experiencing puberty. So I was recommended to watch this anime by one of my subscribers, Anime Viewer 66 and he just asked me to watch it and I said, yeah, sure, it's only 11 episodes, I'll check it out. I actually was very skeptical about watching this anime because I didn't know what to think about, you know, the theme of transsexuality and puberty and middle school. I was very skeptical about that. But that's where the show gets you. The story itself is amazingly told, and it also gives you the perspective of someone who goes through this, I won't say it's a disease or an ailment, just this phase of their life, or something that they really just love to do. Now, like I mentioned, I really didn't know what to think of this anime, because first of all, I really don't understand you know, the whole transsexuality and all that stuff. I really didn't understand that at all but this really puts you in the shoes of someone who is a transsexual looking for you know acceptance and understanding in their sexual identity which leads into my first pro it is a fantastic storytelling anime it has a fantastic story and it dealt with the themes of acceptance heartbreak gender identity and puberty i mean we follow nitori mostly we follow nitori and then we also follow uh takasuki sometimes as they both try to accept who they are sexually like he's a boy and she's a girl and they're trying to find their identity try to find their place in the world try to find acceptance and it really spoke to me because all of us have in our life try to find acceptance with others whether you're a transsexual, homosexual, bisexual, or heterosexual, we all have tried to find acceptance in our world. And I like the fact that they highlighted the whole, you know, the, the pain and suffering that most of these people go through to find acceptance in a world that's just judging them right off the bat. And just to clarify, I don't think that most transsexuals are homosexuals, because in this show, Nitori does like girls. He just likes to dress up as a girl, too. Another great thing about this show is the great character depth and development and the relationship between characters. You can tell that um, the series actually starts off in the middle of what the story is all about because I actually looked into like the manga. It actually starts like when they're all in grade school and they all were friends. But one thing about the story and the characters is that they're so well developed that you already feel the sense that these people have been friends for years or there's been a fallout between them. And continuing off the great character development, we have strong secondary characters, finally. One thing I really liked about the show is that the, the main characters, yes, they were the highlights, but they weren't always the main stage. Sometimes secondary characters took their spot as the main stage. For example, uh, Chiba and uh, Makoto, they at some point took the main stage as main characters for a while. and. They're one of the few characters I actually related to and I actually liked. There's also Sasa, who is this like tall girl, very energetic. I really followed her because I love energetic girls. She was cool. And the last secondary character that I really liked was Anna. Anna is a model who actually under who actually likes weird things, so she really was pulled to want to understand Nitori and actually leads into one of the better scenes in this anime, which I'm not going to say what what it is, but Watch the anime and watch as Nitori and Anna's relationship 
grows and expands. The animation, particularly the character designs, were serene. I liked how they were drawn. I thought they were interesting and fascinating. A little different from uh, other animes I've seen, actually. And the direction was superb. Now, you might not think that, I mean, it's an anime, so what do you mean direction? But there are some scenes in this anime that you can tell it took a directing standpoint to, like, make that angle or do a shot. And it was done perfectly. Sadly, this has not been English dubbed, so for those of you who only like to watch English dubs, uh, you might need to wait a while, but the Japanese voice acting was superb. I really thought that they emoted very well, they portrayed the feelings of the characters very well in their voices. Good job there. And the last pro I want to talk about is that the music is so lovely, and it complements the tone of the anime to a T. Especially the ending thing, it's called I Wanna Cry For You, or just called For You, and it just really, it speaks for the characters itself, because they, you want to cry for these characters because they want, they want acceptance, they want to be what they wish they could be, but they can't be, and you just feel that, like it strikes you in the heart. Now I didn't have a lot of cons for this anime, I had a few, and I'm gonna point them out to you real quick. The first problem I had with this anime was, it's not the animation but the coloring of the anime was like really bright and it gave off this like soap opera feel to the anime and it just like for some reason it hurt my eyes just to like stare at a frame because it was so damn bright and my last but major con of this anime was the lack of parental viewpoint or connection at all what I'm trying to say is I wish that the parents involvement was used uh, efficiently in this anime because I felt like that was the one viewpoint that was not shown in this anime. I would have loved to see it from the parents' perspective, how to deal with a transsexual girl or boy, how do they feel about it. We didn't get to see their viewpoint. And one thing about animes is that they never really show the parents' viewpoint of something. I would have loved to hear what the parents had to say about this. Whether it would be positive or bad, I didn't care as long as I actually hear what the parents had to say. But overall, Horo Masuko highlights the hardships transsexuals go through on a daily basis. It also shows how people try to find their identities, who they are in the world, dealing with puberty, and also not to f not only to find acceptance with others, but also to accept themselves. And that's why I'm going to give this anime a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is a near perfect anime and I really recommend that you all check it out. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? Did you like it? Did you find it disturbing? Did you hate it? And also let me know what is your favorite drama anime. Comment below and let me know. Anyway, I'm the Black Critic Guy, bridging the gap between movies and anime reviews. Till then, peace YouTube.